Good morning, sir. Can you hear us? Yeah. Good morning. I can hear you very well. Uh, nice to have you join us on the show this morning. Uh, let's quickly get your thoughts. It's very exciting that after a year ahead of Independence Day, the president, according to his special advisor on information and strategy, Chief Bayo Nanuga, yesterday told State House correspondents that Mr. President is looking to rejig his cabinet. This morning, the Guardian newspaper put up a picture of 11 appointees and quite shockingly was the inclusion of the chief of staff, or Benny Bajabia Miller, who is rumored to be replaced now. Uh, let's get your thoughts on this and would look at other ministers uh, involved in this conversation as well. You see, when it comes to performance, nobody is indispensable. Unfortunately, in the crime that we are, we don't see resignation as something that is democratic. I don't know where you can hear me. I can hear you now. So we tend to cling to power even when we are failing in the responsibilities of power. At the moment, there is no doubt if people conclude that when your economy fails like this, you have failed in power. The responsibilities in power is to govern effectively. Or they are to govern the country, the state, and it is the entities that form the democratic unity. As it is, not even our political partners are getting it right in terms of allowing the will of the people to prevail. So we are rather practicing democracy just in the name. We have no attributes and we have not maintained the etiquette of democracy. Now, talking about maintaining this etiquette of democracy, a lot of persons before these appointments were made, if you recall, were asking for technocrats to be appointed other than party stalwarts who over time have been purported to be rewarded by these positions in the appointments so that we can have round pegs in round holes. Now, after a year, my, many are saying if that were to be done, we'll be having this discussion now. My brother, we still don't have patriotic technocrats in Nigeria. And if you ask me to explain, I will explain to you. Please do so. What we have, what we have in Nigeria as technocrats are people looking for opportunity to steal from the country. As it is now, there is virtually nobody that doesn't steal when they are in position to lead or to govern the people. For instance, who, let's take the example of the INEC, which the National Assembly are preparing a new legislation to govern them. Who are those INEC electoral commissioners and state commissioners? They are all technocrats, professors, PhD holders. I don't see anyone with common degree or first degree like myself there. But these are the same people that still read the elections. In a country where you read the elections for the ordinary people who are not technocrats, how then can you say that you have patriotic people to pilot the country or to govern it? If a professor could accept elections to be read, or if a professor could accept, or a PhD orders could accept as a state electoral commissioner for elections to be read, or if a professor could even jettison the idea 
and the innovative ideas that the whole world democracy is practicing, which is electronic voting, which is digital collation. How then do you think that we need technocrats to govern us in this country? We don't need technocrats because we don't have them. We need patriots. Patriots, they could be educated or not. The certificates given to people does not make them professors or PhDs. Discipline. Patriotic disciplines that make somebody a citizen. Now talking about the issue of patriotic discipline, Honorable Atahi, amongst these ministers to be replaced, beyond replacement, the humanitarian ministry is looking at being scrapped entirely. A lot of Nigerians, beneficiaries of some initiatives like the NPAR, are already crying foul. Now, does this come to you as a surprise, or do you also agree that the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs be scrapped entirely? Well, before now, we have said that you don't need a Ministry of Humanitarian Agency to function as a nation. What you need in your country that is overpopulated for to the tune of more than 300 million if not 500 million already what you need is social security it is social security for both the low and the aged the young and the aged the artisans the unemployed you need social security you don't need humanitarian agency or whatever that they have today look at what is happening in in, in benue for instance i heard Nema sent some relief materials to victims uh, flood victims and it was it was a kind of uh a program requested by a particular lawmaker from the kwande ushongo exit but never needs to work. Now, whilst it seems as though right honorable Daniel Atahi's connection is quite glitchy as he looks to find a better sport, would have him rejoin us to express his thoughts. Before that disconnection, he was talking about a case study in Benway State and the approach of the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, where relief materials were distributed on the request of a member representing the Kwande Oshungo axis of Benway State. And we'll be curious to find out what his perspective on that is. But just to remind you, The Guardian this morning uh, put up pictures of those who are said to be likely replaced or outrightly scrapped. Mind you, Dr. Beta Edu, one of them who is still currently on suspension. But it is that the ministry in its entirety may be scrapped. There's also possible rejigs in swapping the chief of staff of Beni Femi Badabia Mila and a replacement likely by the former Lagos state governor, uh, Fasho La, at some point. Now, this is some shocking developments this morning. And a lot of Nigerians will be curious as to how the president will go about this cabinet reshuffling. Now, remember, the performance scorecards of the ministers in one year plus is much available to many Nigerians. Some ministers, quite loudly, who have been on their toes, whose pictures do not form part of this discussion, uh, the likes of uh, Baisenye Sonwike, many Nigerians would agree that uh, his transformation of the FCT is quite laudable and one minister deserving of staying in office. But let's go back and see if Right Honorable Daniel Atahi's network is much better so he can pick up from where he left off. Honorable, are you with us? Yes, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, there was a network interference. Quite understandably, understandably so. You can continue from where you left off. I was talking about why we need social security rather than humanitarian agency. Because the collaboration, the collaboration between the federal government and the state government, the powers could be usurped by the state governors. A situation of Kwande Oshongo lawmaker that I saw, 
and I read, the man appealed and attracted a lobby through lawmaking from, from uh, the, the National Emergency Management Agency. And the agency said, in their own routine, how they work, good, we are taking these relief materials as palliatives to your people, as requested. But it is the state government NEMA that will transport it when we take this thing to the state. They will have to transport it to the destination where these things will be distributed. And it is the same NEMA, workers in the state or the national, that will still share the palliatives to these people. Now, the goods go down to Benway. And maybe the government is the state government is not aware whether these goods is for the people of Oshongo and Kwande. So the goods were like seized and diverted to somewhere else in the government house, probably because. Well, quite the network interference this morning as uh, Right Honourable Daniel Setahi looks to make his points on why we need social security as against a humanitarian affairs ministry. Uh, we're hoping that once his network is more stable, he will pick up from where he left using the case study of a lawmaker representing Kwande and Oshongu local government areas in Benue State. The discrepancies between how relief materials are received uh, as they're transported from the national, would I call it, branch of emergency relief as against the role of state emergency agencies. Now, this over time has also been a big challenge in terms of accountability. Many Nigerians grew a phobia for the word palliatives back when we had COVID-19. Until today, discrepancies about accountability and disbursing them have continued to elicit mixed reactions from Nigerians. Now, back to Right Honorable Daniel Atahi. I hope your network does allow you to finish this interesting example you're looking to state. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm so sorry. So that is it. So the palliatives or the relief materials were seized. And ask me, now the state government would say it is their responsibility and that is why NEMA brought those things. But the lawmaker facilitated these things. So, but in a country where you don't have something like NEMA or humanitarian agency, the local government, which is closer to the people, where these things are happening, or the state government, which is again closer to the people, could handle such relief, material, and succor to victims of disasters. Again, if the federal government have what we call social security, social security functions directly from the source. I mean directly from the source in the fact that every citizen have data, data, accurate data with his or her local government. When a disaster like this struck, the local government have data already, computerized data. Your name, your surname, your whatever, your biometrics, your age. But you see, we refuse to do this simple thing. You don't even know who is a citizen and who is not a citizen now in this country. You don't know who is an indigenous and who is not an indigenous in a country where we are almost five, 500 million. Which country in a democracy runs like that? And again, in a country, you see, everything totally is wrong. And I think that we should reshuffle, not only reshuffle the cabinet, the heads of the cabinet, we should reshuffle and a kind of begin afresh, a total overhaul in our ministries, in our departments, in our agencies, an overhaul. And we should do with data analysis. Data analysis is very, very important. 
Now, on the other hand, I do agree with you. This conversation of having social security is much hinged on a social register, like you've said, and possibly a rejig of all the MDAs. This would bring us in some way to recommendations made by the Stephen Oronsey reports and white paper. Now, whilst Nimsi has told us how many Nigerians have needs, the challenge is in our lack of accurate sensors to address our housing deficit as well. Do you think that this non-performance would not be somewhat cured by merely changing heads if we do not have this data like you're advocating for? Honorable Atahi, are you with uh, us? Yes, I'm with you now. I didn't hear the last part of your question. But uh, from what I understand, you are trying to say that, uh, you know, sucking the minister's uh, is it preferably than to make these things work? Is that your question? Yes, please. Like I told you before, whether there is a technocrat there or there is, as head of the minister or ministry, or whether there is uh, a secondary school certificate, certificate holder, like our former president, Buhari, where the people say, even if he has never been as his certificate, they would prefer him. You see, we don't care about certificates. We, we don't need certificate anymore. As a matter of fact, certificate has been a kind of uh, an illusion, uh, a Western illusion, you know, sent to us for us to destroy our economic livelihood our, and our government as well. We don't need certificate to govern. You need knowledge. You just need knowledge, not certificate certificate is not knowledge people can buy certificates even now i don't have prof, uh, a, a phd or a, a professor as my rank of education but there are things i can govern a professor cannot govern like i would do because of the things i know about government about, because of the things i know that in a country you should have you don't need those things so and you don't need to sack people before your ministries could work. You don't need to sack ministers before the ministries or the agencies or the departments should work. You need a perfect system in place. And this is what I said, a perfect system. For instance, we are talking about the social security. If the social security registry is there at the local government, it will also be there at the state government. The, the federal government will also have the same copy it's just like a booty pro, you press your computer, and what is your name? Where has this thing happened? Kwande local government, Oshongo local government, you know the people, or oh, you have verified these persons, they have been affected. These are certain amount of people, you press your button, their biometrics comes out, you are seeing their pictures line. Anyone that is dead, you know that this one is dead. Anyone that is alive, you know that this one is alive. It's periodically updating periodically updating itself. What are we talking about? What are we doing? Our INEC something through in this country is the same thing. You don't need analog electoral umpire in a nation where you have over 500 million people. People who have to go to queue before they vote. And people who have to fight with their guns. Dogs, they have to meet dogs before they vote. People who have to rig election. It's a it's a deliberate um, uh, all professional act by our system so that we will continue to fail. How can a nation of 500 million people and you have less than 10% electing a president or you have less than 5% electing a governor? That is not the power of the people. And that is not, the, that is not democracy. I'm talking, I'm talking all around what you have read from your papers. And I, I want to still go again that we, if we have social security registrar right from our national population census right from our hospitals we will begin to have indigenous local government citizens and where you need to give palliative you you have their bank verification numbers you have their their bank account with the uh, with the local government you don't need this stress to give hundred cartons of 
uh, trains of uh, uh, tractors, a hundred trailers of rice to state governors before the state governors will begin to look for how. It is analogous. What we are doing is analog means of governing. We have not come to the digital level of governance. And that is why we say in digital, I'm using phone now in my house. I'm talking with you now. This is me. Honorable Dan Atai talking with you. And this is you I'm saying. This is what we are talking about that our voting system could go that way. You have the Central Bank of Nigeria disbursing money and regulating all the commercial banks in the country. It is digitally enhanced. It is encrypted, enhanced by cyber security. Why can't we do this? When it comes to election, we say we can't, we can't do this because people will rig it. Why haven't they rigged or uh, uh, violated the security of the CBN or banks and steal money? It's not nice. to rule in a country like this. And it is impossible to govern in a country like this. And that is why we are failing both in the economy, we are failing in production, we are failing in politics, we are failing even in governance. So in Nigeria, it's like everybody is on their own. You don't like have a government that is actually governing you. The system is porous, the system could be thwarted, the system is analogous, the system is undemocratic in nature. And in this manner, you will never, Nigerians are not free. Enjoy democracy. Now, well, looking to prepare solutions and address some of these issues head on, Honorable Atahi, let's get your thoughts on another burning issue in the news. A second item of prominence is on the PMS prize war ongoing between Dangote Refinery and NNPCL. The chief buyer on Anuga yesterday told State House correspondents that President Bola Metinibu would stay neutral. He would not interfere with the ongoing prize feud. I want I don't need you to even finish the question. I watched everything and I keep seeing the drama. It boils down to productivity as a nation. Why would a minister of petroleum, which or who is the president himself? Don't forget the president is still the minister of petroleum. And he tells you he doesn't want to have anything to do with the NNPC and Dangote because NNPC has never been an entity of its own. NNCC, NNPC has been a charter of what the petroleum industry itself, where Mr. President is what is the minister. So is there any sense in saying I want to stay away and leave the regulation or the deregulation or price control with an agency, which is just a marketing agency, and you are the minister of petroleum. In that case, sack yourself from being the minister of petroleum, Mr. President. If you say, this is not my business, then we ask whose business it is. Again, let me, in the country, in our constitution, we have the president of the nation controlling absolutely and exclusively the resources of the country. The resource control is in the exclusive list of Mr. President or the president of this nation. It is not the concurrent or residual list. It is in the exclusive list. That means it is only the federal government that controls mining. It is the federal governance, government that controls anything natural and mineral resources. And in this case, that of the petroleum sector, Mr. President is even the minister. So what are we talking about? I mean, it makes no sense. Let me tell or help Mr. President a little. We do know that there is international bureaucracy right from colonialism. We are aware of those things. And we know the making of powers and government 
in the African continent by the international interests and investors. If you like, call them investors. We know they are still colonialists. But the fact is that in Africa, where you have dilapidation in a country like Nigeria, where you have three good refineries, three solid refineries, enough to perform and to make the country greater than the United States of America, enough to make the country greater than the United Kingdom. Have these refineries not working. And then you have only international investors running your oil companies, and they are the ones that have shares, they are the ones that have the total, they are the ones that have all the energy sector is controlled by foreign interests. That means economically, your production is dependent on foreign nations, foreign investors. And that means you have no economic viability stand as a nation. And that is why we are in the quagmire of devalued Naira, in the quagmire of completely an arrant unproductivity. That is the answer I can give to you. So if you want to leave a nation like Nigeria, as you give to those Caesar who are the international investors, you also give to God who own this land here in Africa and the people of Africa to also benefit from the dividends of governance and democracy. If Mr. President absolutely want to withdraw himself from him from this petroleum saga in the country, he should resign as president or resign as minister of petroleum because he is the president and the minister. Nana Pegasen is advising the federal government. They are also asking that it ups its stakes in Dangote refinery to 45%. Now, in terms of the power dynamics in solving this price feud, uh, price, uh, pump price feud, uh, how do we best ensure that the market is actually seen to be deregulated? NMPC is not empowered by law to produce. What I mean is that NMPC, how do I put this? NMPC is not a refinery. NMPC is also just a marketing agency. So the minister controls how much crude comes in before they can give to NMPC to sell or to refine. So it is NMPC that takes this crude, natural crude, to Europe and America, or to Asian continent, to do what? To refine for us, and bring to the country, and sell as PMS, and to sell to marketers in the country. So what is this that we are saying on price control of the fuel. If Dangote, as an entity, or as an individual, or as a conglomerate, now have the NMP, uh, a refinery in the country which has been absent, which has been in a comatose state, and now was the reason we go abroad to refine, and you have the same refinery with the same capacity, with, with the same optimum ability to produce this crude, to refine them into PMS, into gas, into diesel, into, into uh, kerosene, and all the residuals that you get from the process of refining crude into PMS. Why can't we give the crude directly, like they said in Naira, give the crude to Dangote refinery in Africa here, in Nigeria here? Playing the bureaucracy, the bureaucracy, the political bureaucracy that seems or makes us look like slaves in our own land.
I say slaves in the sense that it is only slaves that have no mental faculty on how to even lead his own family or their own family. In a country where you have the black most populous people, we are lagging behind in our government. We can't even control our industries. We can make them function. And we have billions of dollars talking every day, billions of naira, billions of pounds. We don't even work by naira anymore. We give our budget in dollars. Everything is in dollars. So dollar has hypnotized the naira and our economy. And it is so sad that most of our trade, bilateral trade agreement and products that we bring are not coming from even the dollar nations. We import most of the things we import apart from crude oil that the dollar regulates its price. Every other thing we use in Africa are from China. And we can't seem to diversify to China because the almighty United Kingdom and the almighty United States of America, who are now our new colonialists, our new colonial masters, if you may say, wouldn't want us to diversify our attention to China, to Japan, to South Korea, to India, for our importation or for, 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 for business, so that our refineries could work, if it is China or Japan that is handling our refineries now, by now, or if they are the ones that are our colonial masters, by now, our refineries all would be working, because it's international political bureaucracy that killed our, our refineries, and there is no doubt about that. Any president that comes, they have influence, they sponsor your election, they make you president, they make you this, they make you that. Even I'm about time. So, now, now, in coming back from some of these challenges, we're looking at some of the effects as published this morning, earlier as well on the Daily Trust. The issue is now with the ability of productivity through the civil service. Civil servants are reportedly in three states, Lagos, Ogun, and Oshun, only going to work for a number of weeks, uh, days in a week. They've been now approved off days. Some go to work only really? as much as Monday as, and Friday. How do we address this challenge with the availability of PMS at an affordable rate to up our domestic productivity? Because if civil servants are going to work only twice a week, some of these bureaucratic delays in the MDAs will be further blown out of proportion. As it is now, my brother, I parked my car for more than one month already. And not because I could not afford to buy the PMS, but because I don't want to stress myself too much in trying to get the PMS itself despite the hiking price, it is unavailable. And that is to tell you something, that we just don't need to even go to work before we work. We can work from home. The COVID-19 uh, lessons have given us, have taught us some things that we could actually maximize the maximize the usage of technology and machines to work. After all, what do we have in the civil services that people are even going there to do? It's just paperwork. There are paperwork. There are paperwork can be digitalized if we want. Paperwork is not a kind of productivity, cannot give you maximum productivity. What gives you maximum productivity is industrialization. It is not the civil, civil um, service structures that we have, civil administration that we have. What gives productivity is industrialization. And we are saying that our state of industrialization, our state of industries, are all in a comatose state. Even in the petroleum industry, which is our major gross domestic product, which account for over 95% of our GDI, 
the gross domestic income is they are all in a state of shambu. We still refine the same product from abroad. And when we refine abroad, all the residuals, we paid mortgage, we paid double edges, all the residuals like bitumen. Why do you think you have less gas? You have kerosene. Why do you think that kerosene is fast disappearing? Other countries are making use of those things and giving you only the PMS because that is what you came there to refine. But if we have this refinery here, which we have now, we can produce those things here and we have those things in abundance. Even our quota, the bitumen, we can use it to construct, construct roads that are not. We can get plastics to make, we can get Silicon Valley from it. We can do a lot of things with the byproducts of petroleum. But here we are. So back to the civil service. Civil servants are not even supposed to stress themselves because one, their minimum wage, or which is not a living wage, is just 70,000 naira per month. What will 70,000 do <laughs> where the dollar exchange is 1,000? 639 and above. So, to one dollar, growing up in this country during the time of Shagari era, I think I was a bit like six years old. I'm like uh, going to 49 now. But at that time, we could say that the Naira was superior to the dollars. It was only the pounds, the pounds, that we say one pound is two naira. When we were growing up, I remember my dad would give me Kobo. Kobo. Oh my Jesus. It is so terrible now. If I recall those things, you will go to school with Kobo. You see how you have 10 Kobo, you have 10 Kobo, you have changing from the Kobos again. You can buy bidi bidi sweet, puli puli, you buy in Kobo. And I'm talking about coins. I, I, I live to, to meet this era of, of uh, uh, Aladdin Shehu Shagari. I, I lived in that era. My, my daddy served in the military intelligence at, at, at uh, Sokoto State, Enugu State, and Anambra State, and Lagos State. So we were almost moving around. And when we move around, we have, we, I think there was what we call a, a level of social security. Because every, every month, I see what government palliatives lands in our doors. The government palliatives land directly in our doors. My dad don't need to go there. They just bring them. They have the numbers of the houses in the barrack. They have, they have everything. Everything was com like computerized. And it was not a digital society out of the time. How come that we are now in a digital society and we are lagging behind? And I tell you what, it is corruption. It's a deliberate mischief deliberate mischief and corrupt personalities being employed into our, into our politics. And that is why we have chosen to get nothing done. Now, now in addition to fight this corruption, to... sorry to, to interrupt you, but we have less than a quarter of an hour to go and we have some other prominent issues in the news. In a bit to fight corruption, yeah. earlier when we saw on the front pages of This Day and Blueprints, comments made by the substantive Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Kudira Atkekewe Ekun, who has promised to strengthen institutions and ensure that justice is seen to be done. It is coming at a time when there is also uh, a controversy following what uh, many would say the Bobriski scandal. Whilst the Minister of Interior, the EFCC, and the NBA has called for a probe of the alleged 15 billionaire extortion and the fact that the audio message claimed that he was never incarcerated despite being served a jail term by a competent court of law. These issues are coming almost uh, off the back of each other. Many are asking, has corruption somewhat found its way into the correctional service as alleged? How do we begin to address this with the current chief justice, others asking for a probe, be able to once again strengthen our institutions? My brother, we are in a state of lawlessness in all facets of legality in this country. I was giving you an example of growing up under Shagari. We had what we call death penalty to corrupt practices. 
hardly could you see any political or public figure as corrupt persons at the time. Everybody, everybody maintains the rule of law and order. We maintain those things and we grew up with those things. And someone like me, I still have that culture because it was cultivated in me to do the right thing as a patriotic citizen, as someone who wants his country to go into the right direction. We can't be leaving our country to the United States of America and be showing up that we are US citizens or we are citizens of the United Kingdom. For crying out loud or for God's sake, we are Africans and we can be better if we want. God has blessed us with everything. There is nothing that we lack in this country, in this continent. But alas, they brought technicalities into our constitution and then they removed the death penalty gradually. Gradually they said we are member nation of the United Nations organization. We accepted and then in, in a bid to accept some aids, they said they are giving us aids when we don't even need aid. They asked us to form what we call structural adjustment program that we have enough of food, we have enough of money. We were not even dependent on the oil at the time. We were just using agriculture and mining. Just agriculture. The mining was military. And then when the democratic administration came, the mining was being done by the democratic administration. And we have resources. We have gold. We have tin in Plateau, gold in Zamfara. We have so many things. We have, we have more than 24 non-natural resources that can empower the country and take it from the, 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 the sting of poverty that looms today. Today, we are practicing money or monetized economy and not industrialized economy where they push dollar from UK, they push dollar from IMF, they push dollar from World Bank and we keep collecting like frogs and then we keep eating and then why we forgot about productivity. Product any nation that is not a productive nation is a slave. Any nation that is not a productive nation is a slave. And here we are talking about the rule of law. The Attorney General and the, uh, the Minister of Justice who appoint him is Mr. President. Our constitution has been made that the president has absolute power to appoint and also fire even the CGN. And the CGN is supposed to be under the judiciary. And the judiciary is supposed to be an arm of government, of an, arm, an independent arm of government where their organograms works by mechanism of seniority. But here we are, even in state government, you see the governors appointing uh, 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 attorney generals of the state. The organograms and the internal mechanism of the judiciary is no longer working itself. Now it has been politicized. Just the way gradually we are beginning to politicize even our military now. And nobody is checking it now. When it gets out of hand, you have the military infiltrated. And once you have it infiltrated, that will be too. So the judiciary has long been infiltrated since when the president or the governor, or let me say the executive arm of government, the executive arm of government have to control it. And that is where we say, we should have a constitutional overall, overall, that our constitution is not a democratic constitution, that our, demo, our constitution is a, a fiat military compass. And in, in a fiat military compass, what you have there are mostly dictatorial, where only the executive president dictates and directs the orders. In a democratic nation, these things are not so. They are 
are not done that way and should never be done that way because governance now are in the hands of the people, not in the leaders. The leaders being elected are elected to serve. So you have the opposite in Nigeria where the leaders being elected are elected to lord it over the people. And the people cannot decide again because they have changed the system. Even the electoral system are now being changed where they will tell you to go to court. To go to court if you don't like it. And where you have such gutter language, it shows that the court is ineffective and cannot give justice to the people. It can only give justice to the highest bidders, to people who have the enough number of senior advocates of Nigerians to defend them in court. When they have cases in court, you see senior advocates with their regalia, with their whatever judicial cap, they come, they flout about, they tell you that, ah, oh, my Lord, this person is not guilty. So they are defending criminals because the judiciary is not independent and the organograms of the judiciary is being controlled by the executive power. So until you have an independent judiciary, you will never have the rule of law. Now, very quickly, Honorable At Atahi, in closing, just one last question, and we call it a wrap. In few, five minutes or fewer, can you give us your thoughts on the publication written the front page of the Daily Times in which ASU has issued a fresh 14-day ultimatum to the federal government over unresolved issues dating back to the eight months long strike and on paid salaries and allowances. How, in your perspective, can this issue be resolved? I didn't get you well because the network was interfering. Very quickly, in less than five minutes, the ASU federal government on resolved issues with a fresh 14-day ultimatum. A lot of persons are concerned that we might have another eight months long strike should these issues linger even further. What would you prefer as some solutions to resolving this? You see, ASU and the federal government are not sincere to themselves. And they said, like the saying goes, two rounds will never make it right. That is their situation. The ASU is not a legalized body in the Constitution. But they have become one in a democracy because they are now group registered under the Ministry of Education. And apart from this 2023, all the previous administrations passed, this various president and head of state we had, there was, or there were ASU strikes in all of them. Some one year, some six months, some 24 months. It was only in 2023 when uh, President Muhammad Buhari introduced the IPPIS, which they ask you today, are telling you that they don't want, they want the mechanism to function from their own way, and they can actually do it. If the government allowed them to do it, in the education system, you see there are some schools who are offering online courses. You get it. You know, bringing us back to what I said that our electronic uh, digitalization empire should go, go digital. There are schools in Nigeria, if not all the schools that, are, that have introduced online courses. And you can't cheat it. You have to do it. You have to maintain the time you offer lecture. You take your lecture, write exam, do all those things online and go back, you have schedules. And that is how government should be run. So the impasse between ASU and the federal government, it has history. And the history still boils down to corruption. Because if a system of payroll wants to pay you so that you can be accredited digitally, according to your biometric, you say no. And the federal government under Buhari then said, if you say no, then we will not pay you, we will not adhere to your, to your demands if you don't do this thing electronically. And this, this was same Buhari that uh, came through analog election, notwithstanding wants to do the right thing, want to use like what Jonathan, good luck Jonathan used, 
by introducing the uh, what do you call it? This our uh, pay system now, which is gradually being jettisoned, where we pay through a centralized system. Any government functionary that single you treasury pay, account, you pay through uh, uh, the STA single treasury accounts. Single treasury account. You see, now even the single treasury account is being, you know, breaking down or being jettisoned right now because it's another means of fighting corruption. And because we don't want to fight corruption, absolutely. So the issue of strife between ASU and the federal government will linger. Mind you, these guys have the private universities around you in the country. And so if the federal institutions, the public institutions like our heads, our primary, secondary, and tertiary health institutions are in a state of comatose now, their private ones will function effectively. That is just the game, my brother. Well, Honorable Daniel Atahi, I must thank you for taking our time, despite some glitches in the network and other constraints, to still grace us with your opinions on the program this morning. We do well to appreciate you. Thank you very much for having me.